Hello, ladies and gentlemen. There is this common thought that's going around right now that says that people are suffering from superhero fatigue. And I'm actually going to disagree with that for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, if you really think about it, we have not had that many superhero movies as compared to, for example, Westerns. We've had maybe, what, 50 Five zero movies that have been shown in theaters that are of the superhero genre over the last 10, 20 years. It's not that much. There's always this comparison that says, oh, it's going the way of the Western. It's going to be seen as something that we were excited about that disappeared. And that's just not true. There are hundreds, hundreds of Westerns out there. I, By the way, I love Westerns, love spaghetti Westerns, but... There are not hundreds of superhero films out there. We have not evolved past the superhero film. What we have evolved past is being uh, accepting any film where you put a, a costume on and you say it's part of the DCU and MCU and people flock to the movie theaters. Those are two different and distinct things. A superhero movie is a movie that is about a heroic person who gets a call to action to save the world, to fight a great evil, to do whatever it is, to protect his identity, and oh, to serve society in a way. It is the classic hero's journey. Now, what we have, and I'm going to use the MCU because it's the biggest, most well-known universe in the superhero cinematic world, is <clears throat> we now have trying to pass off very mediocre stories are superhero stories. And they're really not. Like, it's just a couple of weird things that happen. For instance, who's the well-known superheroes in the theaters right now when it comes to the MCU? Like, if you think about it, when we think about the, the you know, classic comic book superheroes, we're thinking about the X-Men. We're thinking about the Avengers, the real Avengers. So, Captain America... Thor, Iron Man. We're not talking about Captain Marvel, who is essentially a character whose main purpose when comic books were really popular was a mechanism, a story mechanism to give the X-Man rogue her superpowers. We're not talking about Ms. Marvel, who is... I mean, she was just never popular. She was a, a, a really... A character they were trying to make popular by forgetting causation. What I mean by that is if you take Spider-Man and you create a really good story that draws people in, relates to people, he then becomes a very popular character and then he's in a million different titles. They thought, well, if we just take this character and put him in a million different titles, put him in the Marvel Avengers video game, give her her own TV show, her own cartoon, whatever it is, that she will somehow become popular. So they tried to do reverse causation. She just isn't that interesting of a character in the first place. And that has nothing to do with her religion or any of that stuff that people will say um, as, a, as a reason for why she's not popular. It's just, she's not interesting. She's bland. And she's not appealing to a large group of people. There's just not a lot, a lot of interest. Anyhow, getting back to it, we have not seen superhero movies from the MCU about the heroes we really care about. Why isn't Captain America in three or four movies? I mean, the real Captain America, I get it. That the actor left. Okay. Guess what? James Bond's been going on for 60 years with various actors. It happens. Doctor Who had a pretty long run with various actors. It happens. So you, you, it's not really an excuse. So... When people are saying we have superhero fatigue, that's garbage. They just don't execute it well. I want to give you a, a comparison between a movie <clears throat> that does something well versus a movie that does something really, really bad. Similar concepts. Similar movies they came out within three years of each other. One is out right now. So the first one's going to be the Marvels. And we're going to talk about Monica Rambeau's issue with Carol Danvers because she was not there for her as a kid because she left, you know, to save the universe, whatever. And so Monica Rambeau has issues with that, saying, why didn't you come visit me? Why didn't you 
be there when I was a little girl, when I was growing up. You were supposed to be there for me. And it comes off as whiny. It comes off as something that nobody really wants to see. Nobody really wants to see that sort of drama, right? There's not really a, a lot of payoff. Now, wind the clock back a couple of years to a movie called Maverick. I know, Maverick saved the movie industry, essentially, at one point. Now, you have a relationship where Pete Mitchell, Maverick, he had flown with the uh, uh, Goose's father. Oh, wait, is it Goose or is it Rooster? I think it's Rooster. I, I'm mixed. Yeah, Goose, Goose was in the original Top Gun. Anyhow, Rooster's father, Goose. He flew with Goose. But Rooster has issues with him because he, through the goodness of his heart, trying to think he was doing the right thing, prevented Rooster from going to the academy. Did something, it's not too specific, but basically blocked him, delayed him for a couple of years, so it took him longer. There's some real tension there, there's some real drama there, but there's also the sense that the reason Maverick did it was because he wanted to look out for the son of his, you know, dead friend. He wanted to look out and made a promise to Rooster's mother. So it was really him acting in a, in a good sense. But that's done really well because it's not just a, a surface level argument between two people. There's a real drive. And in fact, what's interesting is Pete Mitchell does not just tell him the truth of saying, hey, it was really your mom who did it. He keeps that to his grave. He never in the movie tells him. He just basically says, I didn't think you were ready. Um, it was all me. And so there's an added layer there. But I say this because that's the type of difference between good storytelling and bad storytelling that we don't consider when we just make the blanket statement, we're too tired of superhero movies. We have MCU fatigue. We don't. We just haven't had good MCU movies. And it doesn't look like any good ones are coming up. We also haven't had really good superhero movies. And we do this thing whether they take movies and they dumb down their perception of the audience. When we look at the types of conversations happening, it's like they're made for little kids or something. You know, like the, the type of conversations are very basic, very level, very goofy, very, oh, you hurt me. So now I feel that I can't live up to my potential. That kind of garbage crap. You should never, ever underestimate your audience. You should never talk down to them or simplify things to them. I say this because when I was 12, I did not want to look at entertainment that was made for 12 year olds. I wanted to have entertainment that was complex, that was emotionally driven, that had layers of meaning to it. Do you know why the X-Men cartoon in the 90s is so revered by people? Because it did not talk down to its audience. They had themes of death, sacrifice, drama, conflict, unrequited love. These are things that people understand at a pretty young age. But the modern day writers want to make it so goofy, so tropey, so dumb that we have a Thor, Thor, the most powerful of Avengers, acting so dumb. And this whole, oh, I don't understand basic human emotions a trope that seems to be going through all of our major characters gets a little old. You know what I mean? I, I saw this also like in, uh, there was, uh, in the new Star Trek series. They were like, oh, there's Mr. Spock. He doesn't understand basic human emotions. He doesn't understand how people interact with each other. It gets old. People are not dumb. People don't want to see characters that are super dumb. And it's not in anybody's interest to create movies which do this kind of stuff. What I hope happens is we have an alternative, something, maybe, I don't know, maybe Todd McFarlane finally makes that Spawn movie that he's been working on for the last 25 years. But something comes out that respects the audience enough to make nuanced and good movies. What I hate about the MCU right now 
It's just a video game. It's just the same blue lit special effects with very weak stories. When you looked at, for example, The Externals, didn't you get the feeling that movie was just terrible? I mean, really, it had no sense of danger anymore. We've gotten to the point where the stakes don't matter. That first Iron Man movie, when he's sitting in a cave and he's facing impending death, and his enemies are not universe-shattering monsters or interdimensional time travelers. They're extreme Islamic terrorists with AK-47s who can take a bullet and end your life in an instant, who, through a vicious, violent attack, murdered the three people who were in the Humvee that he was sitting next to, murdered the guy who was helping him out when he was stuck in a cave. The stakes mattered quite a bit. When Batman was fighting the Joker in the Dark Knight, and through use of some ammunition and a couple of barrels of gasoline, the villain was bringing the city to its knees. There were stakes. But now we're at this point where, holy cow, this gigantic monster is coming in from a different universe, different dimension. Oh, no worries. We'll just be more concerned about our interpersonal drama with each other, and we'll just use our superpowers to take on these big monsters. The stakes don't matter, basically, is what I'm saying. And we need to get back to a place where those stakes matter. I am really sick of the United Universe and the MCU now. Because like all good things, a lot of powerful aspects of storytelling work best when they're done on a limited basis. Less is more, people. Nuance is better than driving it down your throat. So when everything is about, hey, what's the next chapter in this ongoing United Universe? It becomes very boring. All of a sudden you have a movie, and how do they end it? Well, we're going to have another United Universe with Young Avengers. Oh, and we're going to also unite this universe with the X-Men. And it's just continuous crap. If you read a comic book, and I don't know how many of you out there actually still read comics, but comics existed in their own titles 90% of the time. And then once in a while you'd have a guest appearance of a character from another series and then once in a great while you'd have a crossover and that's when comics were the best if every single action in each individual title of a comic affected the greater universe and then you can't take risks with individual characters because then they always have to be able to justify every action and how has it affected the greater universe you can't have a character die because they need to be part of the next avengers team you can't have a character go bad because then All of a sudden, the Avengers will go, hey, remember the time you went crazy and you started killing people? Now, that's an extreme. But it needs to have balance. Things need to be subtle. Same with the humor. The humor is terrible in MCU movies because they make it the main portion of how people conversate with each other. So the conversations are very stupid. Once in a while, when you had, for example, the Avengers the banter of Tony Stark, the way he would kind of trip up reporters because he was smarter and he was very sharp-witted. It was subtle. But most of the conversations were still based on what was going on. Because the problem is when everybody is goofy, when everybody is saying the same silly things and everybody is snarky, you have no differentiation of the characters themselves. So then you have what I call the friend syndrome. The friend syndrome is when you can take any dialogue and put it in the mouths of any character and nobody tells the difference, right? Because that's what they used to do with friends. You could take any one of those characters, essentially, with, a, with the exception of a few tropes that each character has had. Like, I think one of them said, like, how you doing or something like that. But other than that, the dialogue didn't matter. And that's where we're getting to with these movies. We have these incredible budgets associated with these movies, and we are producing 
crap. And it all comes down to why don't we just write and make better movies? When we make better movies, people are not going to have the quote unquote superhero fatigue. There is no superhero fatigue. That's like saying people are fatigued from movies. We just haven't had good stories. We haven't had good execution. Let's create a couple of good movies. Let's go back to basics. Let's have some individuals. Let's have another Punisher movie that's just going to be a badass Punisher movie. Let's have a real Blade movie that does not impact the rest of the universe. It's not interconnected with Spider-Man and the Avengers and the X-Men. It's just a single badass Blade movie. And then people start having interest again. Anyhow, those are just my thoughts.